Hello my Sock Universe. Well, part of my rethink of my uh, review videos was that I should actually make videos the day after I watched games and yeah, uh, as I said, I will not stick it together all the Serie A videos until the end of the week, so you will get a long video and but I probably would have done a video after that win of Milan wearing the current Milan jersey uh, anyway because it was just a wonderful so but we have to start before we talk Milan we actually have to start with Lecce Lazio because that was an equally crazy game uh, where Mancoso had already scored a wonderful goal I think in the second minute that was then ruled out for um, a handball in the build-up and Honestly, this is this rule that I absolutely dislike. Yeah, it was there, but I think the rule should go back to not that in the build-up and you roll it all, all the way. No, if the ball jumps from the hand into the goal or if there is a pass, the second to last movement, then maybe go back, but not do it like we go five minutes or whatever. The referees have to see that. And yeah, um, this granular thing, but this is another to topic of the video. Then the great goalkeeper of Lecce, Gabriel, makes a horrible mistake. He wants to play out from the back. He misplaces it. The ball falls uh, over a few stations to Casedo, who makes it 1-0 for Lazio. And after Lazio's loss to Milan, I think that was a sorely needed boost for them um, because they needed to get back into it and hope that uh, you will keep dropping points if they really want to go for a championship but to be honest it was more about Lecce who played their hearts out in that one and got a very deserved equalizer in the 30th through Babacar a nice header after a uh, corner cross now after a cross I don't know if it was a corner now see should have done it even sooner but uh the first real talking point, the no second talk talking point was again VAR, where uh, Patrick slides into the block uh, uh, cross and he touches it with his elbow. The referee points immediately to the pair the spot, and even though the VAR says, uh, Look, look at it, he sticks with it. And I'm sorry, where shall he put his ball? He's not going like this, he, the, 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 like that. It's a more. Uh, very much a natural position and I think this is uh, this over regulating mm, drives me nuts um, the funny thing is during the war Bill Bill or Patrick even explains it to a large player uh, acting by lying down and so on yeah, this happened da, 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 what shall I do and so and and so on but the penalty stands but Simi Mancoso has some heart I don't think he did it on purpose but with a rather weird run up and then he hoppity hop and over the bar. I thought there was some justice in that one, but also justice was served in the sense that uh, Lucioni in the 47th after Saponara uh, assist makes it 2-1 for Lecce who were really, uh, as I said, playing the hard out, playing better and having Lazio largely on the back foot. Um, Lazio then, yes, had more of the game, uh, tried to do many uh, things and had good chances, but most of them were thwarted by Gabriel, I have to say, who on the line made two or three really great saves. He also had, had another blunder where uh, he basically, a kick out, went straight to uh, a lot, uh, to Immobile, who uh, couldn't do much with his uh, chance, chance there, but that was actually really weird um, performance of his on the line, world class, off the line, not so much. Lazio cannot get the goal in the frustration. Patrick actually bites um, a Lecce player. I think he, I think it was even Mancoso, not, not, not 100%. Referee doesn't see it immediately, but then after war, he's immediately sent off. And honestly, uh, well, well deserved. Lazio just doesn't look like Lazio at the moment. I heard the theory that yeah they were built for you know playing once a week and not twice a week and there is something to it because in the Europa League they always didn't play all, all, all the great but for once a week they, they play great but I am a little bit sad that Lazio actually um, missed that chance and actually opened Juve a great way of you know make extending the lead to 10 points and basically setting 
Juve on the way. However, Juve had to play Milan and inform Milan. And when is the last time that I've said that? Maybe yeah, a, a bit more than a year, year ago, uh, February, February, March, when Inter brought the same thing to hold under Catuso. And the game in the first half, I think Milan started out well, but then Juve kind of you got a little, a little bit the upper hand, had the better chances, but it was nothing that was really all that uh, convincing. But I think both teams played well. Solid. It was nearly at the half, although Ibrahimovic was scored right before, but it was um, called off for offside, rightfully so. Although I would have loved to see the line on on, on that, but you know, if you warp your eyes a little bit, um, you could see it was an offside. Um, Ronaldo also had a chance. I think there was another another good chance by Ibrahimovic, where he couldn't just just couldn't get um, some thunder behind the shot. It all went nuts in the second half. Um, first I thought, yeah, Milan is attacking Juve and actually were aggressive and then they swiftly got called on a counter-attack where Rabio kind of escapes Theo Hernandez and then no one is bothering to tackle him. He uh, runs through, cuts a little bit on, on the inside, takes a shot and it goes into the internet and I said, ah, ma, Juve is in the lead. That's the last thing I needed. And it does get even better. Dodgy defending after a deep ball from Quadrado from outside the own half. Romagnoli and Kier are more or less stepping on his other foot. I mean, Kier takes out Romagnoli and then um, suddenly Ronaldo can is clear on goal. Makes it 2-0 in the 53rd. Pooh! 2-0. I was down. Uh, my wife was also, all, also watching and thought, ah, it's on, uh, why, why are the game so, so depressing? And I said, yeah, no. <laughs> Brushed myself and said, no, it's going to end 2-2. I believe in Milan. This Milan will make it a 2-2. Uh, only half believing it. And it took a little bit. Milan was a little, little bit shaking, but I thought they actually continued with their play. And then uh, they get a penalty where first uh, everyone thought that uh, Rebic took it with the hand, but then... Bonucci, and this is a handball because he had the elbow right up here. He is now extending his uh, arm um, and it goes off the arm right right here. That's more of a handball uh, than what uh, Eva Patrick did at, at the Lazio way sliding on the floor. We got the break. VAR picks up on it and Ibrahimovic scores, makes it 1-2. And I said, yeah, game on. I thought this will be, you know, Milan will have no many misses, will end 1-2. Uh, kind of, no, no, a really nice attack. And I have to say, bring on Chalunoglu at the half for Paqueta, who didn't all play that well. Um, really invigorated the game. I mean, Chalunoglu had some uh, ish, some issues, so um, played a little bit, uh, you know, just to give him some, uh, some rest. And he plays a ball uh, that go um, Kessie to Chalanoglu to Ibrahimovic who plays to Kessie, who uh, take you know makes a little dummy, shoots it gets deflected, uh, for 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 so the Chesney we would have gone to the left but now it goes straight into the net, two two, didn't take all all that long, Ibrahimovic comes on Bono and Tura comes off. And in the same way, suddenly uh, it goes to uh, Jadoglu, Revich, who is brought down, and Leao is free, and he just takes a shot, and Rugano again deflects it, and it is 3-2. I was beside myself. I just could, I, I, I just could believe it, uh, that in less than six minutes, you turn a game around, to Juventus, who were 2-0 down. So the last time that Juventus lost after being 2-0 up was in 2013. Milan has one of the last 22 games before that won only one game against Juve with a wonderful goal by Loc Loc Locatelli. It was not done yet. That much I know. It was not, not done yet. And um, Sarri immediately brought Diego Costa, uh, Douglas Costa, Matuidi and Ramsey. Uh, to kind of strengthen the attack and they had a huge chance by Rugani who, who probably would have made up for his def uh, defensive errors um, to uh, where Donovan were really safe nicely on, on the line. That could have easily been a 3-3 and if it's 3-3 Juve wins this 4-3. No, Alexandro comes on for Cuadrado, he misplaces the ball 
uh, into the path of Bonaventura, uh, who is, sees Rebic alone in, in the box and makes it 4 2. Yeah, that was that. This felt so good. Finally, we played. Milan always played well against Juve, but finally slaying the dragon. Yes, I have to say um, two caveats. The defending in that entire game was rather dodgy. On the Milan side, the first two goals are the other defensive errors, and at least two of the three goals for, 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 for Milan were also major defensive errors. Um, and it clearly helped that the Licht and especially the baller weren't, weren't uh, suspended for, for the game for Juve. That made it easier. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Anyway, this was still a world-class Juve squad that Milan beat. I hope this carries momentum for the next season. Let's talk about the matches on Wednesday. And yes, I completely changed things up. And yes, Fiorentina is still in the laundry, but will be hopefully for the next one that I'm doing. Uh, I decided for this one to wear Atalanta because it's a New Jersey and I, you know, haven't worn much Atalanta <laughs> because I didn't have a jersey. Um, I actually watched two games fully and two kind of on the side screen so I actually saw quite some and I have to say Serie A is becoming really the main action for me. Uh, I watched Genoa Napoli, Genoa Napoli, sorry, Genoa Napoli and I have to say um, Napoli started out well. There was a goal taken uh, off by Elmas uh, because there was a handball in the um, build-up of, of Manolas again. I this micromanaging of VAR drives me nuts. Um, but then Genoa got into the game and actually was quite well and uh, needed a, a, a late, late in the first half a really good save by Meret to put the ball onto the um, uh, post and keep Napoli in the lead. But just before the half, Insigne plays the ball over to Martins who puts it in the internet. It's 1-0 Napoli. Um, Genoa comes out and immediately after La Stagione cross uh, makes the goal through Goldaniga and I'm really wondering, La Stagione went from Ajax all the way to Genoa at a move that doesn't make much sense especially since he was one of the protagonists of last year's Champions League run. Anyway, and at that point Napoli seemed like they're gonna fall. I really thought that they are on the back foot and it's hard for them to uh, hold on. But about a half an hour or so, um, they got back into, into the game. They brought on uh, Lozano and Milik and immediately uh, Lozano gets the ball in the box. Uh, almost lo loses it but then composes himself, puts it in the net, makes it 2-1 Napoli. And I have to say from that moment on, I thought Napoli was cruising. Yes, there was a good chance that was deflected offside through Pandev late in the game. But Napoli, I think, hung on and uh, deserved fully this win. At the same time, Fiorentina and Cagliari uh, played out a nil-nil draw, but uh, Duncan hit the post for Fiorentina. Um, Dragovski made two huge saves uh, for Cagliari. Then also the uh, Cagliari keeper made a save. There could have been goals, but it ends in a nil-nil draw. Uh, Torino gets a win against Brescia, although Brescia was 1-0 up at the half. Had him chance to make it 2-0, but then an own goal uh, right after the half basically sets Torino on the way, Belotti uh, in the 58 turns around and then Zaza gets the goal. Um, also Bologna Sassuolo was an even game but Sassuolo was scoring the goals through Berardi uh, before the half and Har Haraslin and at the end of, uh, at the beginning of the uh, second half Mihalovic got sent off, um, the coach, and very late Musabaro uh, gets a goal back but it was a little too little too late. I watched the other two games. Um, main game that I watched was not Atalanta Sam Sam Sampdoria, but I want to talk briefly about that one. Um, because whenever I glanced over from uh, Roma Parma, I always had to feel that Sam Sampdoria is actually not only fighting hard, but also uh, having maybe a little bit the better chances. Yes, Atalanta probably controlled the game, but they have, have really, really having a hard time with Sampdoria standing uh, deep and being physically and Sampdoria had some good chances and it took uh, Atalanta a long time 
um, to get um, really uh, control of the game. Um, it was in the last 15 minutes when the Malinowski corner uh, lands on the head of Toloi to make it 1-0 for Atalanta. And at that point, I think it was then deserved. But I think right around the 60th, I think the draw was very well deserved. It was then that Atalanta took over and Luis Muriel from the distance makes it 2-0 uh, and gives Atalanta another win. And I watched Roma Parma and I was first very pleasantly surprised about the jersey matchup. I actually thought about it uh, before that, yeah, I really look, look forward to the yellow, uh, blue of Parma. But then I thought, nah, this will not work against the red of Roma. And Roma goes with the away jersey at home. I don't know why, to be honest. But it was a wonderful jersey matchup. I would have wished. Two things. One is the pants that Roma plays with the red pants and Parma would have yellow pants. I think it, the um, uh, the look last season where they had yellow yellow pants with that jersey here uh, was an even better one than they have currently. Uh, but I absolutely loved it. This was much more uh, colorful than I had the regular uh, match up with the red Roma, Roma jersey and the white with the black cross for Parma. Um, Parma started out well, got a penalty that, yes, if you look at the VAR, it's all right to be given. Kuchka, um, Kucho in the ninth converts it and Roma had trouble getting into the game. Um, it really took them a long time. I mean, they had chances, but it was not all that cohesive. And then it was Bruno Perez uh, who plays it in. I think Perotti steps over and Mkhitaryan puts it in the internet already in the 43rd minute. This was the, I think, second or third uh, time where Roma got a little bit more dangerous, but I have to say they were not all that convincing overall. So um, really well played by Parma. It's 1-1 one, one at the half. And the second half, I have, have to say, was even more entertaining than first because there were many chances going left and right. I mean, it was not a great game, but it was, uh, it was ent entertaining. And the goal from Veretu after a cro uh, cross pass from Mikitarian, he just takes the ball and then makes a huge uh, a shot that curls really nicely into the net. Uh, makes it 2 1 for Roma. Parma, uh, though, comes back, and I think it took them a they, 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 they were shocked about it. it, took about 50 minutes, but then they really came back. Um, there was another call for penalty, which I have to say, it really hits uh, the Roma player up here. So that would have been a very harsh penalty, in my opinion, although the commentator said, yeah, it was a clear penalty. I didn't think so necessarily. Uh, Javinio scores a goal that was rightly flagged for offside, and they... I thought they could get the, the equalizer, but equally, on the counter, like Roma should have made the third goal. They just did not manage. And so it ends with a 2-1 win of Roma, only the second since the restart. And to summarize the Thursday games, I thought, well, if I just unpack the Roma jersey, why not wear it? After all, they won exactly in that jersey in this round, but they didn't, of course, play uh, Thursday. First game was Spal against Udine. Um, Somehow I, ex I expected it to be a little, little bit tighter, but it was uh, rather quickly when uh, the Powell in the 18th made it 1-0 and then Okaka in the 35th was pretty much done and dusted. Uh, they get a late third through Lasagna, but yeah, Udine getting another win and Spal um, looking really in trouble as we will see. The bigger game for sure, sure was Verona Inter and right off the bat, and I noticed Verona, ha I know that Verona has a new logo, but I will adjust this for the new season. Um, right off the bat, Lazovic makes it 1-0 for uh, Hellas, and I think they then could have eaten Inter alive. Uh, they hit once, I think the post had many chances. It took Inter about 20-25 minutes to actually get a little bit of foot into the game without being really at all that dangerous. Uh, it was uh, Verona had chances in the first half to extend the lead. And that was their mistake, because after the half, Inter came back with much improved. Candreva makes it in the 49th, 1-1, one, one, and then also assists an own goal by De Marco just six minutes later. Um, at that point, I thought, yeah, Inter looked much better, and they probably will play this home. No, I was wrong. I even turned the game off, because I was tired. I was totally wrong. Uh, it took a while for Verona, but they actually came back, had a few chances, and then Veloso makes it 2-2 two, two 
and that's how it ends. So now if we look at the current Serie A standings, um, if Juve would have won against Milan, I think we could have crowned them champions. But now uh, Milan just keeps the door open for the championship. Um, the question is for whom? Is it Lazio? Is it Atalanta? Might it be Inter? Um, I think Inter is rather unlikely, but I think Atalanta has a chance, I would say. Um, also, for 5, 6, 7, yes, Napoli has that uh, fixed Europa League spot, so 7 will get you in qualification. Um, the question is um, whether you want that or you want to get fixed in the group stage. So, yeah, uh, Roma, Napoli, Milan are taking it out for that spot. And it's between Roma and Milan, um, and it's a rather tight race. I don't think Sassuolo, Hellas... Uh, can get in there any, 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 anymore and they will form this midfield now and then the only other thing uh, that's exciting is relegation and I have to say uh, although Sampdoria looks like very deep into uh, trouble in 16th I honestly think they will uh, I, I, I agree with the chances here 6% is rather slim I think it will stay that way I think it's between Lecce and Genoa uh, Brescia Spal are already down we know that for a while I really would love to see Lecce up. Uh, they play really nicely whenever I see them, especially when they play against big teams, they usually pull out a good performance. Uh, I think they have made points against all of the top six or seven. Uh, some, some of these. It's pretty remarkable. They have more trouble making points against uh, lower level teams. And then we also need to look ahead uh, for in the schedule um, in the what to watch. I already gave it, but we have a big clash between Juve and At Atalanta. If Atalanta wins that one, and especially if Lazio wins against Sassuolo, we have a wide open championship, I would say. But if Juve wins against Atalanta, I think uh, Atalanta is out of uh, the running. There's also for the Europa League spot a pretty big one between Napoli and Milan, uh, especially given that the Roma Pro will back three points in Brescia. And yeah, Inter against Torino. Uh, Inter needs to get a result. They have had now two um, rather uh, disappointing results. And then if we go a uh, week further, Milan has a game against Parma, which always is iffy, and the Roma against Hellas is also rather... Um, I would favor Roma, but Hellas can cause some damage. Sasso, Juve, I mean, Sasso is also one of those attacking sides. Uh, will much depend, I think, there on what uh, Juve has been doing at Antalanta, who played the derby against Brescia. And again, the derby is not... They were so low looking for because the derby doesn't ha happen that often. The first one was without Atalanta fans, and now this one is without fans, period. So, yeah, rather non-exciting. I quickly want to add the Austrian Bundesliga. I talked about already in what to watch. Austria Wien gets a messy win over Altach. Uh, yes, they had probably more chances, but Altach could have easily converted. I think they hit once the bar. Uh, and so, yeah, was not a good game from all that I could, 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 could get. Uh, and uh, Austria just barely hangs on in our place against Hartberg for the final Europa League spot. And speaking of Austria, I think I gotta address it. It's nothing is yet confirmed, but I think where there's smoke, there is some fire. Uh, the Lask coach is probably out, and with him also the sporting manager. There's seemingly a big rift within the coaching stuff and within the leadership of the club. And I'm afraid the club will descend into chaos because that sporting manager, Jürgen Werner, he, I credit him with all masterminding the rise of Lusk. Now, with they all, because of this corona gate or whatever, yeah, they're losing the nerves. I think they should sit together and figure it out, but I, I will be heartbroken to see both of these leave because I think they don't deserve to be fired like that, but football is a cutthroat business. You will get probably um, tomorrow late Sunday my Champions League and Europa League draw reaction because I think it is quite interesting. Let me know what you thought about the games in Serie A uh, this midweek. Yes, I only make the midweek video because it's already quite long. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. 
Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.